everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a recent reads video. I'm going to be telling you about all of the books that I read in December and January and there are a lot so we need to just get straight into this. <laughs> also I'm going to try and not ramble on and on about these books so this video isn't like 6,000 years long. So the first book that I read in December was There There by Tommy Orange. This is a multi-generational literary fiction story that tells a story of 12 different characters all of Native American descent and all of these characters will be traveling at the end of the book to the big Oakland powwow. So a powwow if you don't know I didn't is a kind of big festivity, it's a big celebration that people in these communities go to celebrate their traditions. Among other characters in this book we follow a woman who is a recovering alcoholic, we follow a young boy who is grieving the loss of his uncle, and we follow a young teenage boy who has taught himself traditional Indian dance for the first time via YouTube videos. I absolutely love the settings and the themes in this book. This is a group of people that I've never read about in fiction before and I loved that. I always love to read about different communities and beliefs and traditions and there's a lot of that in here. Tommy Orange is actually of Native American descent himself and so the detail in here and the honesty is fab. As for themes, there is a ton of really interesting things explored in here. There's violence and recovery loss and of course identity. I also love that this book focused on lots of different people's perspectives. I love books that focus on lots of different characters who are inevitably going to meet at the end of a book. I think that's really cool. And this book became relentlessly fast-paced towards the end as well, but not in a kind of rushed way, in a kind of very planned and thought through way that was really clever. It kind of built up to this climax and I don't know, really created this sense of inevitability and being out of control. There was definitely room for improvement in this novel. The characterization in particular was the area that I thought showed that this was a debut more than anything else. There was so much potential with the characters in here to do something really amazing and that didn't quite happen. There was so much amazing groundwork here though and I found it to be really unique. I thought it was really great and really fresh and overall I really enjoyed it. I would recommend it if you're interested and I gave it a 3.5 stars. The next book that I read in December was I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. This is a modern classic that is a favourite of a couple of my good friends and I basically knew before even starting it that I was going to love it. <laughs> this novel is set in the 1930s and it follows the story of 17 year old Cassandra Mortmain who is living with her newly impoverished family in a crumbling castle in the middle of nowhere and Cassandra thinks this is a really good opportunity to practice her writing skills and so she decides to write about this portion of her life in her journal. Naturally, lots of very exciting things happen. Cassandra falls in love for the first time and there's mystery and family disputes. This is such a lovely book. It was basically everything I wanted it to be. For me, it kind of read as a mix between reading Jane Austen and Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, which I absolutely love both of those, so that's a good thing. <laughs> there was kind of, you know, a young teenage girl who is trying to navigate her way through growing up. There was interesting and eccentric family members and money problems that the family is set on fixing and there was confusion between friendship and romantic relationships. It was just brilliant. If you enjoy this kind of thing like I do, then you absolutely must pick this up. You won't be disappointed. This is timeless, I think. It's so charming and witty and just lovely. All the characters are brilliant as well, so you'll really like them. Overall, I gave this one a 4.5 stars. The next book that I read was a poetry collection and that was The Bees by Caroline Duffy. I absolutely love Caroline Duffy. I've read a few of her collections before and this definitely didn't disappoint. Like with all of Caroline Duffy's collections, there is a mix of themes going on in here. So there's some poems about love, some about political anger, some about family and lots more. But throughout this whole collection there is this reoccurring imagery of the bee. The bee is sometimes the main focus of a poem, sometimes it's not and it just comes in for a little bit but it's always there and it always seems to represent, I don't know, grace and beauty and what's precious 
and ultimately what we should be protecting. Caroline Duffy is just one of the best poets ever. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Her poems are so intimate, but at the same time they're really universal. Her imagery is gorgeous and her wordplay is so intelligent and creative and playful. And the messages as well are so timeless, but also incredibly timely. She's the best. This was a really solid collection of poetry. It wasn't my favourite, but I still really enjoyed it. And overall, I gave it a four out of five stars. The next book that I read was a children's book, and that one was The Restless Girls by Jessie Burton. This is a modern feminist retelling of the Twelve Dancing Princesses story. It's gorgeously illustrated and it was everything I wanted it to be. So when King Alberto's wife dies, he decides that he needs to protect his 12 daughters at all cost, and he effectively takes away their freedom. So the 12 daughters are not happy about this, especially the oldest daughter, and with their wit and ingenuity, they basically go on an adventure to lead the lives they want to lead. This is such a lovely fairy tale, and it's such a wonderful retelling, all of the girls in this book are so fab, they're so intelligent and witty and resourceful, and they certainly don't need a prince to save them. Let me just show you one of the pictures because that's what you want to see, right? <laughs> I thought the illustrations here were so magical and gorgeous, and I thought they fit the story really, really well. You can see the girls on the boat there. Everything about this book just made for such a gorgeous reading experience. I'd really recommend you to give it to children in your life. I think it'd be perfect for younger readers. But also just pick it up yourself if you're wanting a beautiful, enchanting story. This was lovely and I gave it a 4.5 stars. The next book that I read recently was Restoration by Rose Tremaine. This is a historical novel about a young man called Robert Merrivale who gets to work in the court of King Charles II. So Merrivale is very intelligent and and very quick-witted and resourceful and so he rises the ranks quite quickly and he ends up getting the privileged position of being the paper groom to the king's youngest mistress. Then follows all the things you'd expect, the scandal and betrayal and romance. I absolutely love Rose Tremaine as an author. I adore the Gustav Sonata which was one of my favourite books of not last year but the year before and so I went into this having such high expectations and it was good but it didn't really live up. This was an enjoyable read, don't get me wrong. I really like the time setting, I love all of the opulence and the grandeur and the ridiculous characters and the stately homes. I love all of that kind of stuff and the really rich imagery that it throws up. The characters just weren't that brilliant, I didn't really think, which I was surprised about because the characters in the Gustav Sonata I think are amazing. The ones in here though, I just felt they were slightly one-dimensional and I definitely didn't grow to care for them. As for the plot, I really did like the plot, I was really intrigued by it and I was super hooked by it in the first half of the novel. My interest did kind of wane off a bit in the second half and the writing I didn't think was particularly impressive. It was good, but it definitely wasn't brilliant enough to keep me completely engrossed when I didn't care about the plot or the characters so much. Overall, I just found this to be a good historical novel. Rose Tremaine was doing a lot of things right, but it just didn't blow me away. So overall, I gave this one a three out of five stars. The next book and the last book that I finished in December was A Poem for Every Day of the Year, edited by Ali Asirai. This is what it says on the front, it is a collection of poems with one poem for every day of the year, and I did read it right through 2018. So there isn't a lot to say about this one without going into a lot of detail and talking about individual poems and what I liked the most and that kind of thing, which is a different video. <laughs> but be rest assured that I absolutely love this. I discovered so many new poets and poems in here that I absolutely love. This collection has such a great selection of poets in it from different times and different geographical locations and the poems also vary greatly as well in terms of structure and tone and length and I just think there's such a great mix in here. This is fab, I would 100% recommend it to somebody who's wanting to read more poetry or somebody who already loves poetry or somebody who wants to get someone a lovely gift. I think it's great and it certainly didn't disappoint me and I gave it a four out of five stars. So moving on to the books that I read in January, my first read of the year was Adele by Leela Slamani and this was amazing. So this is about a woman called Adele who on 
the surface appears to have a perfect life. So she has a very good job and she lives in a lovely apartment in Paris with her surgeon husband and her young son. But underneath all this surface level stuff, Adele is very unhappy and unsatisfied and she is consumed by an insatiable need for sex whatever the cost. Throughout this novel we get an incredible insight into the psychology of Adele as she struggles with desire and ultimately compulsion and addiction as sex becomes the only thing that makes her feel alive and really we get to witness her life spin completely out of her control. I have already read a Leela Slamani novel, I read Lullaby last year and I absolutely loved it so I kind of knew what to expect from this, I already knew that Leela Slamani wrote with such electrical clarity and that she wrote characters who are so believably complex and interesting and this had everything that Lullaby had but so much more. I cannot tell you just how intelligent and how well done this novel is. Adele is such a fascinating complex character, there is so much to her, it's just so impressive. The writing here is perfect, it's so bright and clear and it fits the themes of the novel perfectly and the book is just so compulsively readable as well. This is so great if you like the idea of literary fiction that has a darker tone and explores themes of addiction and sexuality then you must pick this up. Leela Slamani is such a talented writer, I'm such a massive fan of her now and I don't think I'll forget the reading experience of this in a very long time of course I gave it five stars. The next book that I read in January was also fantastic and that was Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. I'm sure a lot of you already know who Alice Oseman is, she is an incredibly popular YA author and she's one that I've been wanting to pick up for a while and I'm so glad that I finally did. So this story follows two 17 year old British teenagers, there is Frances Janvier who spends a lot of her time studying with the end goal of getting into Cambridge University and she's never quite felt like she really fits in with her school friends. And then there's Alid Last who nobody really knows anything about other than he is a very quiet boy who gets straight A's. Francis and Alid do not fall in love in this story, they form a deeply intimate and caring and supportive platonic friendship and they make a podcast. This story is mainly about two people who are trying to find themselves and navigate their way through the incredibly difficult time that is being 17 years old as a British teenager. <laughs> At this point you are verging on adulthood and you're being told from all angles that you need to know what you want to do with your life and that you should be planning out your entire future. This book depicts so well the pressures that you can feel from academia at this time of your life, particularly the pressure to go to university and it depicts really well, really really truthfully, the stress that this can cause and ultimately the negative effect that it can have on your mental health. The characters in this novel are really brilliant, I really really liked all of the characters in here actually, I found them to be really believable and really well thought through and I grew to care about them quite a lot. Francis and Alid's relationship particularly was so brilliant to me, it was actually one of the best relationships I've read about in fiction for a long time. Alice Oseman is well known for her brilliant representation in her novels of different sexual identities and gender identities and race and I thought this was all done really well, it wasn't forced, it was just real life. And she's also really well known for grounding her stories very well in modern day and I completely agree with that, I think this was one of the best depictions of modern British life I've seen in terms of teenagers and how they socialise and how they use social media and the pressures they feel, I think it was brilliant. This book is amazing, I think it is so timely and so relatable in so many different ways and I think the themes explored in here are really important as well so I can't recommend this more highly, if you haven't read Alice Oseman yet and you like YA at all then you must and overall I gave this one a 4.5 stars. And the final book that I read recently was also amazing and that was Normal People by Sally Rooney. This is a new favourite of mine, hands down. This book tells the story of Connell and Marianne who are two people who grew up in the same rural town in Ireland, although basically everything else about their backgrounds is different. Simply put, this book just follows their relationship from the time in which they are both teenagers over the next few years till they are young adults. This book is a masterpiece, it is so good on 
basically every level that I'm not really sure <laughs> where to begin. This isn't a plot driven novel, this is just about the characters and their lives and their relationship with one another and I absolutely loved that. The characterization in here and the relationship between the characters and its complexity and its believability was in another league. It was so <laughs> shockingly good. The way that Sally Rooney explores communication in particular in this novel is outstanding. So you get to see things from both Connell and Marianne's points of views at different times and the ways in which they interpret and misinterpret things and how that's completely shaped by their different backgrounds and personalities and mindsets is so clever and so interesting and you get to see the ways in which they communicate in a million different ways that isn't just verbally and the ways they make effort to change and reach out to one another and understand. There is just so much going on in here, I don't know if any of that even made sense, <laughs> but just the way she managed to capture so many of the complexities of this huge thing that is communication is just mind-blowing. I have no idea how she did it. <laughs> I don't really want to say much more about this, to be honest. It's just about two people living their inevitably complex lives, as all of our lives are, and it's perfect. You will cry if you read this, you will see yourself in this. It's so perceptive and so bold and captivating and often uncomfortable. It's so special. This is a five star book and you need to read it for yourself. So that's it. Those are all the books that I read in December and January of this year. As you can tell, the start to my reading year in 2019 is going so well, so strong, and I'm in such a positive and motivated reading mood at the moment. So that's really nice. As always, if you've read any of these books, please let me know down below. I'd love to chat with you about them and I hope you've enjoyed them as much as I seem to be enjoying things at the moment. <laughs> Thank you for watching everyone, I really appreciate it as always. Let's talk down below if you've not read any of these and you're not interested in them, then just tell me about what you've been reading recently, I would love to know. Bye for now everyone, I will see you next week.